Okay, yeah. So let's let's talk about that. Uh, let's talk about that. So that's today's icebreaker. Actually, is when you hear the word asteroid, what do you think, or what what pops to mind when you hear asteroid? You said some people say small small rocky body. Some people say large rocky body. Okay. Any other thought? They're rocks. Yeah. Any other thoughts on what asteroids are? They're not. They're not stars. So let, let's talk about what asteroids are, um, and I'll come back to that issue of size because that's kind of important. Um, so asteroids. The first asteroid to be discovered was by a name by I'm not sure if I can pronounce his name. Gisby Piazze. He accidentally discovered the first asteroid. He was studying stars through a telescope, and he found an asteroid between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter, and it's called Ceres. Um, at the time, this, this is the first one, he called it a planet, because he didn't know what else to talk to call it. Um, but over the years, can I advance? Over the years, more and more asteroids were discovered. Um, Ceres was the biggest one and still is the biggest one, but more and more asteroids were discovered. <clears throat> and it came, it came, they found so many asteroids that they didn't feel comfortable calling these planets anymore because they were all found between the orbits of Mars and Jupiter. And by the way, that picture is not the scale. Mars and Jupiter are actually much farther away from each other, and Jupiter is much bigger than that, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so at this point, like I said, they didn't feel comfortable calling all these things planets, so they gave them the name asteroid. Now, asteroid, the word literally means star-like. And the person who chose this name is William Herschel, who was the man who discovered Uranus. So this guy discovered a new planet. He knows what planets are. One of his colleagues called Ceres a planet. And for some dumb reason, I have no idea why, this guy went and calls uh, these things starlight, even though they're not stars. They're rocks. They're not stars. They don't emit light. They reflect light. And they orbit our sun, which means they're definitely not stars because we don't have stars orbiting the sun. And now we're stuck with this stupid word, and I have no idea why we call them asteroids, which means starlight, because they have nothing like stars at all. So that's my rant of the day. Anyway, let's talk about what asteroids are actually like. They're large, lumpy space rocks, like you guys said. Um, individually, they're pretty boring. There's not much going on. They're like big space potatoes. And the issue of size there, uh, they're if, if, if you have a space rock that's 10 meters or larger, that's considered an asteroid. Anything smaller is considered a meteor. Uh, we, and if you took our sign from me, you might remember talking about meteors. Um, so 10 meters, that's about the size of this classroom. So 10 meters is about the size of this classroom. So if you have a space rock that's the size of this classroom or bigger, is considered an asteroid. Uh, we know of hundreds of thousands of uh, asteroids with a diameter of greater than a thousand kilometers. So there's lots of big ones out there. There's a lot more smaller ones, but there's definitely lots of big ones too. Asteroids are typically, typically made of like iron and nickel. And in fact, if you were to go around on the ground and look for these things, um, they would stand out from ordinary earth rocks because iron and nickel don't usually uh, last that long on the Earth because on Earth we have oxygen and oxygen turns to corrode things. So we can, if you find if you find a lump of iron and nickel that doesn't corrode or has not been corroding like the other iron and nickel, is potentially come, came from space. Uh, they they also reflect very little light, which makes them so hard to see. The reason why uh, Ceres was not discovered until 1801, even though it's really big is because it reflects such little light. These things are dark. These are like almost black. So they reflect sunlight, but only very small amounts of sunlight. Um, and also, do you guys remember, or do you got, uh, let me show you this slide again. This area here called the asteroid belt. We call this the asteroid belt um, because this is where most of the asteroids are found. But <clears throat> the asteroid belt is mostly empty. The reason we call it the asteroid belt is because you have the highest chance of finding asteroids there. 
let me show you what I mean. So I'm not sure how well you guys can see this from where you're sitting, but here I have a diagram of the solar system. So here, this very blue circle on the very outer edge, that's the orbit of Jupiter. And then there's another circle, uh, that's the orbit of Mars, and all these little white dots are asteroids. Actually, all these dots are asteroids. Go ahead. Yep, Jupiter right here. Yes, the, the orange, the orange, the green, the white, those are all asteroids. Okay. Now, what do you guys notice about the position of the asteroids? Are they restricted to any one part of the solar system? Yeah, they're, they're all over the place. They're concentrated right here, and maybe a little bit right here, but they're all over the place. Uh, let me show you another diagram. So this is a distribution chart uh, I'll talk about orbital inclination in a second, but this, this part here at the bottom is AU. So AU is a nice, convenient way to measure the solar system. Again, if you took me for Earth science, you might remember this. <coughs> so the Earth is exactly one AU from the sun. So zero, there's the sun. One is the Earth. 1.5-ish uh, is Mars. 5.2-ish is Jupiter. So again, the more heavily you see these dots concentrated where you find most of the asteroids. So most of the asteroids are here. Uh, but again, they're not restricted to here. <laughs> now this word orbital inclination, what orbital inclination means is that that's how tilted the orbit is compared to Earth's orbit. So if you have an orbital inclination of zero, that means you're on the same orbital plane as the Earth. If you're way up here at 40, that means you're way out of the plane of the Earth. You're like, here's the Earth, but here's the asteroid or whatever. Now, do you guys notice that, are there any asteroids the same distance from the sun as the Earth? Oh, look again, look closely. Yeah, a little bit. Not that many. I mean, compared to this, there's a ton right here, right? There's a ton there in that red zone, but there's a little bit where the Earth where the Earth is, and some of those orbital inclinations is pretty close to the Earth. So some asteroids do come close to the Earth, not very many, but some of them do. And I want you guys to keep uh, that thought in your head because we're gonna this week we're gonna talk about asteroids uh, and what impacts they have on us, if any. So that was a really quick slideshow. That was a really quick crash course into asteroids and where you would find them. You guys have any questions? If you're uh, if you're done with it, sure. Yeah. <laughs> 